Welcome to the Bible study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today and for those who will listen in later on the archives. We pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, this week we are going to continue with the book of First Chronicles. Actually, we're going to complete it, reading chapters 15 to 29. Before we uh, get started with that, I'm going to open with our opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit in to lead this entire session. Father God, we thank you that we are able to be here and study your word. We know your word is holy and true, and we cling to your word. We love your word, Father, and we love you. We ask your Holy Spirit to come lead us, guide us, direct us, open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart, that we may be open and receptive to your word, and that we can ingest it, digest it, and take it with us and make it part of our lives. We thank you so much for all that you have done, all that you're doing, and all that you're about to do in our world. We thank you for the great sacrifice that you gave when you sent your only son into the world to die for our sins, that we could we could be reconciled to you. And we thank you, Yeshua, for giving your life for us. We pray this in the name above all names, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. So we're going to actually start with um, chapter 15. When the ark is brought into Jerusalem, uh, remember we were, um, we left off where um, David had tried to bring the ark to Jerusalem, uh, but he did not follow all the preparations um, that had been in place uh, and, and actually explained to the people back in Moses' time, and it was all written, um, it was not actually done. So Uzzah um, actually reached out to stabilize the cart, and he touched um, he touched the ark where he should not have touched, touched the ark, and he was struck dead. And so at, at this point, the ark had not been brought to Jerusalem, but we're going to pick up here in chapter 15 where the ark is indeed brought to Jerusalem. David built houses for himself in the city of David, and he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent for it. Then David said that no one but the Levites may carry the ark of God, for the Lord had chosen them to carry the ark of the Lord and to minister to him forever. So at this point, they figured out what went wrong, and um, they were correcting, correcting what, what had gone wrong so that they could bring the ark into Jerusalem. Then, then, David, then David said, um, I'm sorry, and David assembled all Israel at Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord to its place, which he had prepared for it. And David gathered together the sons of Aaron and the Levites. Of the sons of Kohath, Uriel the chief, with 120 of his brothers, of the sons of Merari, Asa, I'm sorry, Asaya, the chief, with 220 of his brothers, of the sons of Gersh Gershom. Joel, the chief, with 120 of his brothers, of the sons of Elisaphon. And Sh Shemaiah, the, the chief, with 200 of his brothers, of the sons of Hebron. Eliel, the chief, with 80 of his brothers, of the sons of Uziel. And Aminadab, the chief, with 120. 112 of his brothers. Then David summoned the priests Zadok and Abiathar and the Levites Uriel and Asaiah um, and Joel and Shemaiah, Eliel and Amminadab, and said to them, You are the heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites. Consecrate yourselves, you and your brothers, so that you may bring up the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel to the place that I have prepared for it, because you did not carry it the first time the Lord our God broke out against us because we did not seek him according to the rule. So the priests and the Levites consecrated themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel. And the Levites carried the ark of God on their shoulders with the poles, as Moses has com had commanded according to the word of the Lord. 
And David also commanded the chiefs of the Levites to appoint their brothers as the singers who should play loudly on musical instruments, on harps and light and lyres and cymbals to raise sounds of joy. So the Levites appointed Heman, the son of Joel, and of the brothers Asaph, the son of Berechiah, and the sons of Merari, their brothers Ethan, the son Kishiah, and with them their brothers of the second order, Zechariah, Jaziel, Shamaramah, Jahil, Uni, Eliab, Benaiah, Messiah, Menatiah, and Eliphalahu, and Mignanapha, and gatekeepers Obed Edom and Jael. The singers, Heman, Asaph, and Ethan, were to sound bronze cymbals, Zechariah, Az Aziel, Shemaramah, Jehiel, Uni, Eliab, Mas Masai, and Benaiah, were to play harps according to Elamath, but Mattathiah and Elephalu, Mikneha, and Obed Edom, Jael, and Az Azaziah were to lead with leaders according to the Sheminah. Kenai, the, the, the leader of the Levites in music, should direct the music, for he understood it. Berechiah and Elkanah were to be gatekeepers for the ark. Shebaniah, Josh Joshaphat, Nathaniel, Amasai, Zechariah, Benaiah and Eliezer the priest should blow the trumpets before the Ark of God. Obed Edom and Jehiah were to be gatekeepers for the Ark. And so David and the elders of Israel and the commanders of thousands went to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the house of Obed Edom with rejoicing. And because God helped the Levites who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, they sacrificed seven bulls and seven rams. David was clothed with a, with a robe of fine linen and as also were all the Levites who were carrying the ark and the singers and Kenaniah, Ken the leader of the music of the singers, and David wore a linen ephod. So all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with, with shouting to the sound of the horn and trumpets and cymbals and made loud music on harps and lyres. And as the ark of the covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looked out the window and saw King David dancing and celebrating she despised him in her heart. Chapter 16, the ark placed in a tent. And they brought in the ark of God and set it inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before God. And when David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord and distributed to all Israel, both men and women, to each a loaf of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then he appointed some of the Levites as ministers before the ark of the Lord to invoke, to thank, and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph was the chief, and second to him was Zechariah, Jael, Shemaramah, Shem and Jahil, Mattathiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obed, Edom, and Jael who were to play harps and lyres. Asaph was to sound the cymbals, and Benaiah and Jehaziel, the priests, were to blow trumpets regularly before the Ark of the Covenant of God. Then on that day, David first appointed the thanksgiving. He sang to the Lord by Asaph and his brothers. David's song of thanks, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praise to him, Tell of all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and, and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, the miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of Israel, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Remember his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel, an everlasting covenant, saying, 
to you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When you when you were few in number, of little account, and sojourners in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, "Touch not my anointed ones. Do do my prophets no harm." Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And he is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. And let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea roar in all that fills it. Let the field exult in everything in it. Then shall the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Say also, save us, O God of our salvation, and gather and deliver us from among the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in, in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. And all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Worship before the ark, so David left Asaph and his brothers there before the ark of the covenant of the Lord to minister regularly before the ark as each day required. And also Obed-Edom Edom, and his 68 brothers, while Obed-Edom, the son of Jebuthun, and Hosea were to be gatekeepers. And he left Zadok, the priest, and his brothers, the priest, before the tabernacles of the Lord in the high place that was at Gibeon to offer burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offerings regular, regularly morning and evening to do all that is written in the law of the Lord that he commanded Israel. With them were Heman and Jeduthun and the rest of those chosen and expressly named to give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love and endures forever. Heman and Jeduthun had trumpets and symbols for the music and instruments for sacred songs. The sons of Jebuthun were appointed to the gate. And all the people departed, each to his house, and David went home to bless his household. Chapter 17, The Lord's Covenant with David. Now when David lived in his house, David said to Nathan, the prophet, Behold, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under a tent. And Nathan said to David, Do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, It is not you who will build me a house to dwell in. For I have not lived in a house since the day. Sorry, I was losing my voice there. But this same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, it is not you who will build me a house to dwell in, for I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up Israel to this day. But I have gone from tent to tent and from dwelling to dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus shall you say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a name like the name of the great ones of the earth, and I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall waste them no more as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, 
and I will subdue all your enemies. Moreover, I declare to you that the Lord will build you a house. When your days are fulfilled to walk with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, one of your own sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be a father to him. I, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. I will not take my steadfast love from him as I took it from him who was before you, but I will confirm him in my house and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words and in accordance with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David. David's prayer. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is, is my house that you have brought me thus far? And this was a small thing in your eyes, O God. You have also spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come, and have shown me future generations, O Lord God. And what more can David say to you for honoring your servant? For you know your servant for your servant's sake, O Lord, and according to your own heart, you have done all this greatness in making known all these great things. There is none like you, O Lord, and there is no God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And who is like your people Israel, the one nation on earth whom God went to redeem to be his people, making for yourself a name for, for great and awesome things, and driving out nations before your people whom you redeemed from Egypt? And you made your people Israel to be your people forever. And you, O oh Lord, became their God. And now, O oh Lord, let the words that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house be established forever and do as you have spoken and your name will be established and magnified forever, saying, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel is Israel's God and the house of your servant David will be established before you. For you, my God, have revealed to your servant that you will build a house for him. Therefore, your servant has found courage to pray before you. And now, O Lord, you are God, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now you have been pleased to bless the house of your servant, that, that it may continue forever before you. For it is you, O Lord, who have blessed, and it is blessed forever. Chapter 18, David defeats his enemies. After this, David defeated the Philistines and subdued them, and he took Gath and its villages out of the hand of the Philistines. And he defeated Moab, and the Moabites became servants to David and brought tribute. David also defeated Hadadazir, king of Zobeth Hamath, and he went up to set his monument at the river Euphrates. And David, I'm sorry, as he went up to set up his monument at the river Euphrates, and David took from him 1,000 chariots, 7,000 horsemen, and 20,000 foot soldiers. And David hamstrung all the chariot horses, but left enough for 100 chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadadazer, king of Zobah, David struck down 22,000 men of the Syrians. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the, and the Syrians became servants to David and brought tribute. And the Lord gave victory to David wherever he went. And David took the shields of gold that were carried by the servants of Hadadazar and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Tibhath and from Kun, cities of Hadadazar, David took a large amount of bronze. With it, Solomon made the bronze sea and the pillars and the vessels of bronze. When Tau, king of Hamath, heard that David had defeated the whole army of Hadadazar, king of Zobah, he went, he sent, I'm sorry, he sent his son Hadar, Hadaram to King David to ask about his health and to bless him because he had fought against Hadadazur and defeated him. For Hadadazur had often been at war with Tao. And he sent all sorts of articles of gold and silver and of bronze. These also King David dedicated to the Lord together with the silver and gold that he had carried off from all the nations of Edom, Moab, the Ammonites, the Philistines, and Amalek. And Abishai, the son of Zeruah, killed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. Then he put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants, and the Lord gave victory to David wherever he went. David's administration. So David reigned over all Israel, and he administered justice and equity to all his people. And Joab, the son of Zeruah, was over the army, and Jehoshaphat, the son of 
Ahilud was recorder, and Zadok the son of Ahitab, and Ahimelech the son of Ariather were priests, and Shav Shavza was secretary, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over the Kerethites, and the Pelethites, and David's sons were chief officials in the service of the king. Chapter 19, the Ammonites disgraced David's men. Now, after this, Nahash, the king of the Ammonites, died and his son reigned in his place. And David said, I will deal kindly with, with Hanan, the son of Nahash, for his father dealt kindly with me. So David sent messengers to console him concerning his father. And David's servants came to the land of the Ammonites to Hanan to console him. But the princes of the Ammonites said to Hanan, do you think because David has sent comforters to you that he is honoring your father have not his servants come to you to search and to overthrow and to spy out the land so Hanan took David's servants and shaved them and cut the, off their garments in the middle of their hips and sent them away and they departed when David was told concerning the men he sent messengers to meet them for the men were greatly ashamed and the king said remain at Jericho until your beards have grown and then return when the Ammonites saw that they had become a stench to David, Hanan and the Ammonites spent 1,000 talents of silver to hire chariots and horsemen from Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia from Aram, Makkah, and from Zobah. They hired 32,000 chariots in the king of Makkah with his army who came in and camped before Mediba. And the Ammonites were mustered from their cities and came to battle. When David heard it, he sent Joab and all of the army of the mighty men and the Ammonites came out and drew up in battle array at the entrance of the city, and the kings who had come were by themselves in the open country. Ammonites and Syrians defeated. When Joab saw that the battle was set against him, both in front and in the rear, he chose some of the best men of Israel and arrayed them against the Syrians. The rest of his men he put in charge of Abishai, his brother, and they were arrayed against the Ammonites. And he said, if the Syrians are too strong for me then you shall help me but if the Ammonites are too strong for you then I will help you be strong and let us use our strength for our people and for the cities of our God and may the Lord do what seems good to him so Joab and the people who were with him drew near before the Syrians for, for battle and they fled before him and when the Ammonites saw that the Syrians fled they likewise fled before Abishai Joab's brother and entered the city and Joab came to Jerusalem and when the Syrians saw that they had been defeated by Israel they sent messengers and brought out the Syrians who were beyond the Euphrates with Shopak the commander of the army of Hadadazur at their head and when it was told to David he gathered all Israel together and crossed the Jordan and came to them and drew up his forces against them and when David set the battle in array against the Syrians they fought with him, and the Syrians fled before Israel, and David killed of the Syrians the men of 7,000 chariots of 40,000 foot soldiers, and put to death also Shophak, Shophak and the, who was the commander of their army. And when the servants of Hadadazar saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they made peace with David and became subject to him. So the Syrians were not willing to save the Ammonites anymore. Chapter 20, the capture of Rabbah. Now, in the spring of the year, the, the time when kings go out to battle, Joab led out the army and ravaged the country of the Ammonites and came and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jer at Jerusalem and Joab struck down Rabbah and overthrew it. And David took the crown of their king from his head. He found that it weighed a talent of gold and in it was a precious stone and it was placed on david's head and he brought out the spoil of the city of very great amount and he brought out the people who were in it and set them to labor with saws and iron picks and axes and thus david did to all the cities of the ammonites then david and all the people returned to jerusalem Philistine giants killed. And after this, there arose war with the Philistines at Gezer. Then Sibachai, 
the Hushethite struck down Sippai, who was one of the descendants of the giants, and the Philistines were subdued. And there was again war with the Philistines, and Elhanan, the son of Jer, struck down Lami, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was again war at Gath, where there was a main where there was a man of great stature, another giant, who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in number, and he also was descended from the giants. And when he taunted Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, David's brother, struck him down. These were descended from the giants in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Chapter 21 David's census brings pestilence. Then Satan stood against Israel and incited David to number Israel. So David said to Joab and the commander of the army, Go number Israel from Beersheba to Dan and bring me a report that I may know their number. But Joab said, May the Lord add to his people a hundred times as many as they are. Are they not, my lord, the, the king, all of them, my lord's servants? Why then should my Lord require this? Why should it be a cause of guilt for Israel? But the king, king's word prevailed against Joab. So Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came back to Jerusalem. And Joab gave the sum, the numbering of the people to David and all Israel. There were 1,100,000 men who drew the sword and in Judah, 470,000 who drew the sword. But he did not include Levi and Benjamin in the numbering for the king's command was abhorrent to Joab, but God was displeased with this thing, and he struck Israel, and David said to God, I have sinned greatly in that I have done this thing, but now please take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have acted very foolishly, and the, the Lord spoke to God, David, um, David, David, Seer, uh, Gad, I'm sorry, the Lord spoke to God, that's G-A-D, David, Seer, saying, Go and say to David, thus says the Lord, three things I offer you. Choose one of them that I may do it to you. So Gad, Gad came to David and said to him, Thus says the Lord, choose what you will, either three years of famine or three months of devastation by your foes while the sword of your enemies overtakes you, or else three days of the sword of the Lord, pestilence on the land, with the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the territory of Israel. Now decide what answer I shall return to him who sent me. Then David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Let me fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercy is very great, but do not let me fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence on Israel, and 70,000 men of Israel fell. And God sent the angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. But as he was about to destroy it, the Lord saw and he relented for the, from the calamity. And he said to the angel who was working destruction, it is enough, now stay your hand. And the angel of the Lord was standing by the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. And David lifted his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven. And in his hand, a drawn sword stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders cloth and sackcloth fell upon their faces, and David said to God, Was it not I who gave command to number the people? It is I who have sinned and done great evil. But these sheep, what have they done? Please let your hand, O Lord my God, be against me and against my father's house, but do not let the plague be on your people. David builds an altar. Now the angel of the Lord had commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up and, and raise an altar to the Lord, on the threshing floor at Ornan the Jebusite. So David went up at Gad's word, which he had spoken in the name of the Lord. But or now Orna was threshing wheat. He turned and saw the angel and his four sons who were with him hid themselves. As David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David and went out from the threshing floor and paid homage to David with his face to the ground. And David said to Ornan, Give me the site of the threshing floor that I may build on it an altar to the Lord. Give it to me at, at its full price that the plague may be averted from the people. 
Then Ornan said to David, Take it and let my lord the king do what seems good to him. See, I had see I give the oxen for burnt offerings, and the threshing sledges for the wood, and the wheat for a grain offering. I give it all. But King David said to Ornan, No, but I will buy them for the full price. I will not take for the Lord what is yours, nor offer burnt offerings that cost me nothing. So David paid Ornan six hundred shekels of gold by weight for the site. And David built there an altar to the Lord and presented burnt offerings and peace offerings and called on the Lord. And the Lord answered him with fire from heaven upon the altar of burnt offering. Then the Lord commanded the angel and he put his sword back into its sheath. At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him at the threshing floor of Orna, Ornan, the Jebusite, he sacrificed there for the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses had made in the wilderness, and the altar of burnt offering were at that time in the high place at Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid of the sword of the angel of the Lord. Chapter 22. Then David said, Here shall be the house of the Lord, and here the altar of burnt offering for Israel. David prepares for temple building. David commanded to gather together the resident the resident aliens who were in the land of Israel and he set stone cutters to prepare dress stones for building the house of God. David also provided great quantities of iron for nails for the doors of the gates and for clamps as well as bronze and quantities beyond weighing and cedar timbers without number for the Sidonians and Tyrian, Ty, Tyrians uh, brought great quantities of cedar to David. For David said, Solomon, my son, is young and inexperienced, and the house that is to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent of fame and glory throughout all lands. I will therefore make preparation for it. So David provided material in great quantity before his death. Solomon is charged to build the temple. Then he called for Solomon, his son, and charged him to build a house for the Lord, the God of Israel. David said to Solomon, My son, I had it in my heart to build a house to the name of the Lord, my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, You have shed much blood, blood and have waged great wars. You shall not build a house to my name, because you have shed so much blood before me on the earth. Behold, a son shall be born. To you who shall be a man of rest, I will give him rest from all his surrounding enemies, for his name shall be Solomon. And I will give peace and quiet to Israel in his days. He shall build a house for thy name, my name. He shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish his royal throne in Israel forever. forever. Now, my son, the Lord be with you, so that you may succeed in building the house of the Lord your God, as he has spoken concerning you. Only may the Lord grant you discretion and understanding that when he gives you charge over Israel, you may keep the law of the Lord your God. Then you will prosper if you are careful to observe the statutes and the rules that the Lord commanded Moses for Israel. For be strong and courageous, fear not, do not be dismayed. With great pains I have provided for the house of the Lord 100,000 talents of gold, a million talents of silver, and bronze, and iron beyond weighing. For there is so much of it, timber and stone, too, I have provided. To these you must add, you have an abundance of workmen, stone cutters, masons, carpenters, and all kinds of craftsmen without number, skilled in working gold, silver, bronze, and iron. Arise and work. The Lord be with you. David also commanded all the leaders of Israel to help Solomon his son, saying, Is not the Lord your God with you? And has he not given you peace on every side? For he has delivered the inhabitants of the land into my hand. And the land is subdued before the Lord and his people. Now set your mind and heart to seek the Lord your God. Arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God, so that the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God may be brought into a house built for the name of the Lord. Chapter 23, David organizes the Levites. When David was old and full of days, he made Solomon, his son, king over Israel. David assembled all the leaders of Israel and priests and the Levites. The Levites, 30 years old and upward, were numbered, and the total was 38,000 men. 24,000 of these, David said, 
shall have charge of the work in the house of the Lord. Six thousand shall be officers and judges, four thousand gatekeepers, and four thousand shall offer praises to the Lord with the instruments that I have made for praise. And David organized them in divisions corresponding to the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Gershon were Laban and Shimei, the sons of Laban, Jehiel, the chief, and, and Zepham, and Joel, three. The sons of Shimei, Shalemoth, Haziel, and, and Haran, three. These were the heads of the father's houses of Laban, and the sons of Shimei, Shimei, Jehath, Zena, and Jush, and Beria. These four were the sons of Shimei. Jehath was the chief, and Ziza, the second, but Jush and Beria did not have many sons, therefore they became counted as a single father's house. The sons of Kohath, Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel, four, the sons of Amram, Aaron, and Moses, and Aaron was set apart to dedicate the most holy things that he and his sons forever should make offerings before the Lord and minister to him and pronounce blessings in his name forever. But the sons of Moses, the man of God, were named among the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses, Gershom, and Eleazar, the sons of Gershom, Sebuel, the chief, the sons of Eleazar, Rehabia, the chief of Eleazar, had no other sons. But the sons of Rehabia were very many. The sons of Izhar, Shalomith, the chief, the sons of Hebron, Jeriah the chief, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechamim the fourth. The sons of Uziel, Micah the chief, and Aishaya the second, and the son of Merari, Meli, and Mushi. The sons of Meli, Eleazar, and Kish. Eleazar died having no sons, but only daughters, but their kinsmen, the sons of Kish, married them, the sons of Mushi, Mali, Eder, and Jeremiah, three. These were the sons of Levi by their father's houses, the heads of fathers, their father's houses, as they were listed according to the number of the names of the individuals from 20 years old and upward who were to do the work for the service of the house of the Lord. For David said, the Lord the God of Israel has given rest to his people and he dwells in Jerusalem forever and to the Levites no longer need to carry the tabernacle or any of the things for its service. For by the last words of David, the sons of Levi were numbered from 20 years old and upward for their duty was to assist the sons of Aaron for the service of the house of the Lord, having the care of the courts and the chamber and the cleansing of all that is holy, and any work for the service of the house of God. Their duty was also to assist with its showbread, the, the flour for the grain offering, the wafers of unleavened bread, the baked offerings, the offering mixed with oil, and all the measures of quantity or size. And they were to stand every morning thanking and praising the Lord, and likewise at evening. And whenever burnt offerings were offered to the Lord on Sabbaths, new moons, and feast days, according to the number required of them regularly before the Lord. Thus they were to keep charge of the tent of meeting and the sanctuary and to attend the sons of Aaron, their brothers, for the service of the house of the Lord. Chapter 24, David organizes the priests. The divisions of the sons of Aaron were, the, were, were the, these. The sons of Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father and had no children. So Eliezer and Ithamar became the priests. With the help of Zadok, of the son of Eliezer, and Ahimelech, of the sons of Ithamar, David organized them according to the appointed duties in their service. Since more chief men were found among the sons of Eleazar, then among the sons of Ithamar, they organized them under 16 heads of fathers' houses of the sons of Eleazar and eight of the sons of Ithamar. They divided them by lot, all alike, for they were sacred officers and officers of God among both the sons of Eleazar and the sons of Ithamar. And the scribe Shemelath 
uh, I'm sorry, Shemai, the son of Nathaniel, a Levite, reported them in the presence of the king and the princes and Zadok, the priest, and Ahimelech, the son of Adiathar, and the heads of the father's houses of the priests and of the Levites, one father's house being chosen for Eleazar and one chosen for Ithamar. The first lot fell to Jehoiarib, the second to Jediah, the third to Haram, and the fourth to Seorim, the fifth to Melchijah, the sixth to German, the seventh to Hakaz, the eighth to Abijah, the ninth to, to Jeshua, the tenth to Shechaniah, the eleventh to Eliashab, Eliashib, I'm sorry, and the twelfth to Jacob, the thirteenth to Hupa. The fourteenth to Jeshabia, the fifteenth to Bilga, and the sixteenth to Immer, the seventeenth to Hezer, the eighteenth to Hepazes, and the nineteenth to Pethahai, the twentieth to Jezekel, and the twenty first to Jachin, the twenty second to Gamal, and the twenty third to Jed. To Dedabiah, to Deliah, I'm sorry, and the 24th of Messiah. And these had their appointed duty in their service to come into the house of the Lord according to the procedure established for them by Aaron, their father, as the Lord God of Israel had commanded him. And of the rest of the sons of Levi, the sons of Amram, Shubael, of the sons of Shubael, Jediah, and Ishaya, Ishaya, the chief. I'm sorry, the chief of uh, the is Itharites, Shelemoth of the sons of Shelemoth, J Jehath, the sons of Hebron, Jeriah, the the chief of Amariah, the second, Jehaziel, the third, Jechamim, the fourth, the son of Uziel, Micah, and of the sons of Micah, Shamir. The brother of Micah, Ishaya, of the sons of Ishaya, Zechariah, the sons of Merari, Mali and Mushi, the sons of, of Zaziah, Beno. The sons of Merari, uh, of Jeziah, Beno, Shoham, Zachor, and Ibri. Of Mali, Eliezer, who had no sons. Of Kish, the sons of Kish, Jer Jeremiel, the son of of Mushi, Mali, Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the sons of the Levites according to their father's houses. These also the head of each father's house and his younger brother alike cast lots, just as their brothers, the sons of Aaron, in the presence of King David, Zadok, Ahimelech, and the heads of father's houses of the priests and of the Levites. Chapter 25, David organizes the musicians. David and the chiefs of the service also set apart for the service the sons of Asaph and, and of Heman of Jeduthun, who prophesied with leers and with harps and with cymbals. The list of those who did the work and of their duties was of the sons of Asaph, Zachar Joseph, Nethaniah, and Asherah, sons of Asaph, under the direction of Asaph, who prophesied under the direction of the king. Of Jeduthun, the sons of Jeduthun, Gedaliah, Zeri, Jesiah, Shemaiah, Hashabiah, and Mattathiah, six under the direction of the father Jeduthun, who prophesied with a leer in thanksgiving and praise to the Lord. Of Heman, the sons of Heman, Bukiah, Madaniah, Uziel, Shebuel, and Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hananiah, and Eli Eliatha, Gidelti, and Romamti Ezer, Josh Bakasha, Malathi, Hothar, Mathaziah, all these were the sons of Heman, the king's seer, according to the promise of God, to exalt him 
for God had given Heman 14 sons and, and three daughters. They were all under the direction of their father, and the music in the house of the Lord was cymbals, harps, and lyres for the service of the house of God. Asaph, Jeduthun, and Heman were under the order of the king. The number of them, along with their brothers who were trained in singing to the Lord, all who were skillful, were 288, and they cast lots for their duties, small and great, teacher and pupil alike. The first lot fell for, for Asaph to Joseph, the second to Gedele to him and to his brothers and his sons, 12. The third to Zephyr, his sons and his brothers, 12. The fourth to Isri, Isri his sons and his brothers, 12. The fifth to Nethaniah, Nith his sons and his brothers, 12. The sixth to Bukiah, his sons and his brothers, 12. The seventh to Jeshurali, Jeshurala, I'm sorry, his sons and his brothers, 12. And the eighth to Jeshai, his sons and his brothers, 12. The ninth to Medaniah, his sons and his brothers, 12. The tenth to Shemaiah, his sons and his brothers, 12. The eleventh to Azarol, his sons and his brothers, 12. The twelfth to Hashbiah, his sons and his brothers, 12. To the thirteen Shu. Shu his sons and his brothers, to the 14th, Mattathiah, his sons and his brothers, 12, to the 15th, to Jeremoth and his sons and his brothers, 12, to the 16th, to Hananiah, his sons and his brothers, 12, to the 17th, to Josh Bekasha, his sons and his brothers, 12, to the 18th, to Hananiah, his sons and his brothers, 12, to the 19th, to Malathi, his sons and his brothers, 12, to the 20th, to uh, Eliatha, his sons and his brothers, 12, to the 21st, to Hathor, his sons and his brothers, 12, to the 22nd, to Gedalti, his sons and his brother, 12, to the 23rd, to Mahaziah, his sons and his brother, 12, to the 24th, to Romamti Ezer, his sons, and his brother, 12. <clears throat> Chapter 26, Divisions of the Gatekeepers. So this, you can see in the book of Chronicles, it's very detailed as to who gets what and who, who's assigned to this. And now we're going to the gatekeepers. Uh, to the gatekeepers of the Korahites, Meshelamiah, the son of, of Kor, of the sons of Asaph, and, and Meshelamiah had sons, Zechariah the firstborn, Jediel the second, Zebediah the third, and Jethaniel the fourth, Elam the fifth, Jehohanan the sixth, Elihone the seventh, and Obed-Edom had sons, Shemaiah the firstborn, Jehozabad the second, Je Joah the third, Sekar the fourth, Nathaniel the fifth, Amiel the sixth, Issachar the seventh, Paluthe, Paluthe, Paluthe the eighth, for God blessed him. Also to his sons, Shemaiah were sons born who were rulers in, in their father's house, for they were men of great ability. The sons of Shemaiah, Achni, Raphael, Obed, and Elzabad, whose brothers were able men, Elihu and Semachia. All these were the sons of Obed Eden, with their sons and brothers, able men qualified for the service. 62 of Obed Eden. And Meshelamiah had sons and brothers, able men, 18. And Hosa, all uh, Hosa of the sons of Merari had sons, Shimri the chief, for though he was not the firstborn, his father made him chief, Hilkiah the second, Tibaliah the third, and Zechariah the fourth, all the sons and brothers of Hosa were thirteen. Those divisions of the gatekeepers corresponding to their chief men had duties just as their brothers did, ministering in the house of the Lord. 
and they cast lots by their father's houses, small and great alike, for their gates. And the lot for the cast fell to Shalamiah. They cast lots also for his son Zechariah, a shrewd counselor, and his lot came out for the for the north. Obed Eden came out for the south, and to his sons was allotted the gatehouse. For Shepham and Hosea, it came out for the west at the gate of Shelaheth on the road that goes up. Watch corresponded to watch, and on the east there was six each day, on the north four each day, on the south four each day as well, at two and two at the gatehouse. And for the colonnade on the west there were four at the road and two at the colonnade these were the division of the gatekeepers among the Korahites and the and the sons of Merari treasurers and other officials and other Levites Ahijah had charge of the treasuries of the house of God and the treasuries of the dedicated gifts the sons of Laid and the sons of the Gershonites belonging to Laden, the heads of the father's houses belonging to Laden, the Gershon, Gershonite Jehadi. Je I'm sorry, it was Je Jehili. The sons of Jehili, Zetham, and Joel, his brother, were in charge of the treasuries of the house of the Lord. Of the Amramites, the Isharites, the Hebronites, and the Uzielites, and Shebuel. The son of Gershom, son of Moses, was chief officer in charge of the treasuries. His brothers from Eleazar were sons from, from Rehabiah, and his son Jeshai, and his son Joram, and his son Zikri, and his son Shelemath. This Shelemath and his brothers were in charge of all the treasuries of the dedicated gifts that David the king and the heads of the father's houses and the officers of the thousands and hundreds and commanders of the armies had dedicated from spoil one in battles they dedicated gifts for the maintenance of the house of the Lord also all that Samuel the seer and Saul the son of Kish and Abner the son of Ner and Joab the son of Zeruah had dedicated all dedicated gifts were in the care of Shalemeth and his brothers of the Isharites Kenaniah and his sons were appointed to external duties for Israel and uh, as officers and judges uh, the Hebronites, Hashabiah, and his brothers, 1,700 men of ability, had oversight of Israel westward of the Jordan for all the work of the Lord and for the service of the king. Of uh, the Hebronites, Jerijah was chief of, of the Hebronites of whatever genealogy uh, for father's house. In, in the 40th year of David's reign, search was made, and men of great ability among them were found at Jazer in Gilead. King David appointed him and his brothers, 2,700 men of ability, heads of father's houses, to have the oversight of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of, of the Men Menasites for everything pertaining to God and for the affairs of the king. Chapter 27, Military Divisions. This is the number of the people of Israel, the heads of father's houses, the commanders of thousands and hundreds, and their, their officers who served the king in all matters concerning the divisions that came and went month after month throughout the year, each division numbering 24,000. Jashabim, the son of Zabdiel, was in charge of the first division of in the first month, and his division were 24,000. He was a descendant of Perez and was chief of all the commanders. He served for the first month. Do Dodai, the Ahohite, was in charge of the division in the second month, and his division were 24,000. The third commander for the third month was Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the chief priest in his division were 24,000. This is the Benaiah who was a mighty man of the 30 in command of the 30. Amizabad, his son, was in charge of his division. Asahai, the brother of Joab, was fourth for the fourth month, and his son Zebediah, after him and his division were 24,000. The fifth commander for the fifth month was Shemhuth. The Is Israelite in his division were 24,000. Sixth for the sixth month was Ira, the son of Ikash, the Tekoite, 
in his division were 24,000. Seventh for the seventh month was Helaz the Pelanite of the sons of Ephraim, and his division were 24,000. Eighth for the eighth month was Sibachai the Hushathite of the, the Zerahites, in his division were 24,000. Ninth for the ninth month was Ebiezer of Anatha, a Benjaminite, in his division were 24,000. Tenth for the tenth month was Maharai of Netapha of the Zerahites, in his division were 24,000. Eleventh for the eleventh month, month was Benai of Pirathon of the sons of Ephraim in his division were 24,000. And twelfth of the twelfth month was Heldai, the, the Netophathite of Othniel, and his division were 24,000. Leaders of tribes over the tribes of Israel for the Reubenites, Eliezer, the son of Zikri, was chief officer for the Simeonites. Shephathiah, the son of Maka, for Levi, the Hashabiah, the son of Kemuel, for Aaron, Zadok. For Judah, Elihu was one of David's brothers. For Issachar, Amri, the son of Michael. And for Zebulun, Ishmael, the son of Obadiah. For Naphtali, Jeremoth, the son of Azrael. For the Ephraimites, Hoshea, the son of Azazia. I'm sorry. And uh, for the half tribe of Manasseh, Joel, the son of Padiah. For the half tribe of Manasseh and Gilead, Edo, the son of Zechariah, for Benjamin, Jasiel, the son of Abner, for Dan, Azarel, the son of Jeraham. These were the leaders of the tribes of Israel. David did not count those below 20 years of age, for the Lord had promised to make Israel as many as the stars of heaven. Job, the son of Zeruah, began to count, but did not finish. Yet wrath came upon Israel for this, and the number was not entered in the chronicles of King David. Over the king's treasuries was Azamavath, the son of Adiel, and over the treasuries in the country, in the cities and in the villages and in the towers was Jonathan, the son of Uziah. And over those who did not, who did the work of the field for tilling the soil was Ezri, the son of Kelub, and that's spelled C-H-L-U-B. And over the vineyards was Shimei, the Ramathite. And over the produce of the vineyards for the wine cellars was Zabdi the Shifmite. And over the olive and sycamore trees in the Shef Shephala was Baal Hanan, the Gitterite. And over the stores of the oil was Joash. Over the herds that pastured in Sharon was, was Shitrai. And Sh the Sharonite over the herds in the valleys was Shafar, the son of Ad Adlai. And over the camels was Obiel, Obi the, the Ishmaelite, and over the donkeys was Jediah, the, the Maranathite, Mera and over the flocks was Jesus, the Hagrite, and all these were stewards of King David's property. Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, being a man of understanding and a scribe. He and Jehiel, the son of Hakmoni attended the king's sons. Ahithophel was the king's counselor, and Hushai the, the archite was the king's friend. Ahithophel was succeeded by Jehoiada, the son of Benaiah, and Abiathar, Joab, was commander of the king's army. Now, David's charge to Israel, this is in chapter 28. David assembled at Jerusalem all the officials of Israel and officials of the tribes, the officers, and divisions that served the king, the commanders of thousands, the commanders of hundreds, the stewards of all the property and livestock of the king and his sons, together with the palace officials, the mighty men, and all the seasoned warriors. Then King David rose to his feet and said, Hear me, my brothers and my people. I had it in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God, and I made preparations for building. But God said to me, you may not build a house for my name, for you are a man of war and have shed blood. Yet the Lord God of Israel chose me from all my father's house to be king over Israel forever. So, for he chose Judah as leader and in the house of Judah, my father's house and among my father's sons, he took pleasure in me to make me king over all Israel. 
and all of my sons, for the Lord has given me many sons. He has chosen Solomon, my son, to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. He said to me, it is Solomon, your son, who shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. I will establish his kingdom forever. If he continues strong in keeping my commandments and my rules as he is today. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the assembly of the Lord, and in the hearing of our God, observe and seek out all the commandments of the Lord your God, that you may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance to your children after you forever. David's charge to Solomon, and you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father. And serve him with a whole heart and a willing mind, for the Lord searches all hearts and understands every plan and thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you, but if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Be careful now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Then David gave Solomon his son the plan of the vegetable of the temple and of its house, houses, its treasuries, its upper rooms, and its inner chambers, and of the room for the mercy seat, and the plan of all that he had in mind for the courts of the house of the Lord, all the surrounding chambers, the treasuries, the house, the treasuries of the house of God, and the treasuries for dedicated gifts, for the divisions of the priests, and of the Levites, and all the work of the service in the house of the Lord, for all the vessels for the service in the house of the Lord, the weight of gold for all golden vessels for each service, the weight of silver vessels for each service, the weight of the golden lampstands and their lamps, the weight of gold for each lampstand and its lamps, the weight of silver for a lampstand and its lamps, according to the use of each lampstand stand in its service, the weight of gold for each table for the showbread, the silver for the silver tables, and pure gold for the forks, the basins and the cups for the golden bowls and the weight of each for the silver bowls and the weight of each for the altar of incense made of refined gold and its weight also his plan for the golden chariot for, of the cherubim that spread their wings and covered the ark of the covenant of the lord all this he had made clear to me in writing from the hand of, of the lord all the works to be done according to the plan. Then David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and courageous and do it. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed for the Lord God, even my God is with you. He will not leave you or forsake you until all the work of the service of the house of the Lord is finished. And behold, the divisions of the priests and the Levites for all the service of the house of God and with you in all work will be every willing man who has skill for any kind of service also, the officers and all the people will be holy at your command. The 29th chapter, this is the final chapter of this book of First Chronicles. Offerings for the temple and David the king said to all the assembly, Solomon my son, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced and the work is great, for the palace will not be for man, but for the Lord God. So I have provided for the house of my God so far as I was able, the gold for the things, for the things of gold, the silver for the things of silver, and the bronze for the things of bronze, the iron for the things of iron, and, and the wood for the things of wood, besides great quantities of onyx and stone for setting, antimony, colored stones, all sorts of precious stones and marble. Moreover, in addition to all that I have provided for the for the holy house, I have a treasure of my own gold and silver, and because of my devotion to the house of my God, I give it to the house of my God. Three thousand talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and seven thousand talents of refined silver, for overlaying the walls of the house, and for all the work to be done by craftsmen, gold for the things of gold and silver, for the things of silver, who then will offer willingly, consecrating himself today to the Lord. Then the leaders of fathers' houses made their free will offerings, as did also the leaders of the tribes, the commanders of thousands and of hundreds, and the officers over the king's work. They gave for the service and 
of the house of God, 5,000 talents and 10,000 um, dairies of gold and 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze and 100,000 talents of iron. And whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord in the care of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced because they had given willingly for with a whole heart they had offered freely to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. David prays in the assembly. Therefore David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, our Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours yours is the kingdom O lord and you are exalted as head above all both riches and honor come from you and you rule over all in your hand are power and might and in your hand is it is all it, it is to make great and to give strength to all and now we thank you our god and praise your glorious name but who am I and what is my people that we should be able thus to offer willingly for all things come from you and of your own have we given you. For we are strangers before you and sojourners as all our fathers were. Our days on the earth are like a shadow and there is no abiding. Our Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a house for your holy name comes from your hand and as all your own. I know, my God, that you are, that you test the heart, I'm sorry, that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness. In the uprightness of my heart, I have freely offered all these things. And now I have seen your people who are present here offering freely and joyously to you. O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our fathers, keep forever such purposes and thoughts in the hearts of your people and direct their hearts towards you. Grant to Solomon, my son, a whole heart that he may keep your commandments, your testimonies, and your statutes, performing all, and that he may build the palace for which I have made provision. Then David said, All the assembly bless the Lord your God, and all the assembly bless the Lord, the God of their fathers, and bowed their heads and paid homage to the Lord and to the king. And they offered sacrifices to the Lord, and on the next day offered burnt offerings to the Lord, 1,000 bulls, 1,000 rams, and 1,000 lambs, and with their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. And they ate and drank before the Lord on that day with great gladness. Solomon anointed king, and they made Solomon the son of David king the second time, and they anointed him as prince for the Lord and Zadok as priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of, of the Lord as king in place of David his father, and he prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. All the leaders and the mighty men and also the sons of King David pledged their allegiance to King Solomon. And the Lord made Solomon very great in the sight of all Israel and bestowed on him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. Now, there had only been... Um, King Saul and King David. So he's the third king, actually. The death of David. Thus David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. And the time that he reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. Then he died at a good age, full of days, riches, and honor and Solomon his son reigned in his place. Now the acts of King David from first to last are written in the chronicles of Samuel the seer and in the chronicles of Nathan the prophet and in the chronicles of Gad the seer with accounts of all his rule and his might and of the circumstances that came upon him and upon Israel and upon all the kingdoms of the countries. And that's the end of our our reading for this week. And I'm going to, uh, we're going to do a recap. 
and then do an altar call and close out this week's session. So again, as I had mentioned, um, the book of First Chronicles and Second Chronicles are double book. They had had at one point been one book in uh, one one book complete. Um, so First and Second Chronicles were probably written between 425 and 400 BC. So I'm just going to go over some of the things that we we read this week. And again, um, some of the things we have read in Samuel and, and First and Second Kings. The first book covers the period from Adam to the death of King David around 971 BC, and it um, so. And we just uh, indeed read that um, Solomon is now king. So the book of Second Chronicles will pick up uh, where the king is now, King Solomon. This central message of Chronicles is the temple and the house of the Lord. So the second part of, uh, of First Chronicles, um, which actually we we read part of it last week because we went up to this, the 14th chapter, but from chapters 10 to 29 records the events and accomplishments in the, in the life of King David. Um, and we indeed did see that. So again, um, David's reign, we see the people uh, during David's reign is like the, in First Chronicles. So chapters 1 through 9, we see the people of the Lord. Um, chapters 10 to 12, we see the anointed of the Lord. Uh, 13 to 16 is the Ark of the Lord. Uh, 17 to 21 is the covenant of the Lord. And chapters 22 to 29 deals with the temple of the Lord. And beginning this week, you know, we started in that third section of the Ark of the Lord. Um, ch uh, chapters chapters 13 to 16 deals with that. And we picked it up at chapter 15. Remember on um, the earlier chapters, 13, 14 of last week, uh, they were not successful in bringing the Ark in. The first thing that D David did after he became king was to bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. To have the Ark of the Covenant in Jerusalem meant that the presence of the Lord would be there. Um, in First Chronicles 15, David brought the Ark to Jerusalem, and God blessed David. Um, in uh, chapter 16, um, verses um, 7 to 36, we see a psalm of thanksgiving that David composed. And in this psalm, David uses the Ark of the Covenant to teach the people about the mercy of God. And then we see the covenant of God from chapter 17 to 21. God was pleased to choose one nation, one nation out of the human race. Then one of that nation, God chose one tribe, Judah. And out of the one tribe, God then chose one family, the house of David. God then chose to make a wonderful covenant with the house of David. And our Lord and Savior comes through that house. Chapters 18 to 20, we see the divine implementation of the covenant when David later fell to Satan's temptation, though, and when he numbered Israel, and which was contrary to the will of God, and God intervened and overruled. And this led to the fixing of a spot where the future temple was to stand. And then the temple of the Lord, um, God did not allow David to build the temple, but David was, was allowed to provide the following materials. The Levites, the priests, the singers, the porters, the, the, the charge to Solomon and the nation. And we saw all of that. And that is the end of our recap. Father God, we thank you for your powerful word. And we thank you that um, that you blessed your people and, and that you made an everlasting covenant also. And we know the covenants that you make are forever. Um, they're they're that was an everlasting covenant that you had made. Um, with that condition too, though, the, um, that um, Solomon um, was to continue in the statutes and your commandments and, and all, and that you would continue to bless, bless the house of David. Father God, we thank you that you are a God of order. We thank you for this book that is, it is very detailed um, and we can see how how detailed things are, and and they are for a reason. You are a God of order, and um, 
things just move very much more quickly uh, and uh, I'm sorry, smoothly when there is order and you, you allow David to organize everything so that it would go smoothly for Solomon because Solomon was very young when he took over um, as king. So David, you allow David to, to make things easier for him by, by organizing and getting some of the materials and getting all the people in place and then addressing the people and letting them know and preparing them ahead of time. We thank you for all that you have done in the past. Uh, we see, you know, preparation for things and to pass the baton is very important. And we talked about that last week. Um, we, we talked about that in, in our Shabbat services where, um, where Moses passed the baton, uh, to Joshua, he could not see the promised land. And in turn, David passed the baton to Solomon as much as his heart longed to build, um, build you a house he was not going to be able to, but he was, he showed uh, his gratefulness to you, Father God, and may that be a, a lesson to all of us that, you know, maybe there are, is something that we desire to do in our lives, but, but it may be our, the next generation that carries that through. But in any case, you know, laying foundations, everybody's part in the kingdom is important. And, and you give that message very loudly and clearly. And we thank you for that. Father God, we give you all of our praise, all of our honor, and the glory belongs to you forever and ever. We pray this in the name above all names, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. We're going to move into the altar call. Yeshua, Jesus, died for each and every one of us, and salvation can only be achieved through him and him alone. We cannot save ourselves. He was the only one that could actually pay our sin debt in full with his life because he lived a perfect life, was sinless, blameless, spotless. And that was the criteria for, for being able to remove our sins. Prior to his coming, there was a sacrificial system that was in place, but it only covered sin. The wages of sin are death, and they cannot stand before a holy God. So um, there had to be something to deal with sin. Um, so um, God did allow for that substitution. And the types and shadows of the animal sacrifices in the Old Testament looked ahead to when Yeshua would be the ultimate sacrifice. And there need not be any other sacrifice for that because the blood of, of Yeshua is enough to, to give us that salvation, to redeem us of our sin. And he loved us that much that he gave his very life for us. And the Father loved us so much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world that the world may be condemned, but through him the world might be saved. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all of sin and come short of the glory of God. And Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. Christ died for us, and he took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross, so that there was redemption of sin, full redemption of sin through his shed blood, and reconciled finally then to the Father. Jesus also uh, was beaten brutally by Roman soldiers and one of those stripes he took our illnesses and afflictions and we can say by his stripes we are healed. You cannot get to heaven on your own merits. You can't buy your way into heaven and absolutely there are not many paths that lead to heaven and not everyone's going to heaven either. Um, Jesus himself said there will be those that will stand before him that will be saying, Lord, did I not teach in your name? Did I not preach in your name? Did I not cast out demons in your name? And he will say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't know who you are. And they did probably, no doubt, did not call on the name 
that would save them. They did not repent of their sins and ask for forgiveness. It's that simple. And when you repent of sin, you, you, you want to move away from, from doing that again. Um, so you're, you're, you're not getting your slate wiped clean to go out and repeat it over and over again. That is not the intent of doing that. First John chapter one, verse nine says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is the only one that can do this. No one can do this. No man can do that. So if you're taking, taking that to a confession, um, they can't absolve you from sin. And, and that is just not true. The only one that can forgive you is Yeshua himself who died for you. If there would be any other way of redemption, Jesus wouldn't have had to die on a cross. I mean, that is just crazy to think that there's many paths to heaven because that's not true. He would not have had to go through what he went through. And that's actually insulting to, to him who loved us so much that he died for every single one of us. So do not fall for that worldly decep deception that is not true. So if you are ready to say this prayer, if you would like to be born again and saved and, and have Jesus, Yeshua, as your Lord and Savior, you can say this prayer with me now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner and I know that I can't save myself. I need a Savior. And I do know that Savior is the Messiah, is Jesus, Yeshua. I believe also that he died on a cross, he was buried, and he rose again and is sitting at the right hand of the Father. I also believe he's coming again to rule and reign. And I'm asking you, Jesus, to forgive me of my sins. I want to change my life, and I'm asking you to help me to do that. Thank you for, for paying my sin debt in full. Please, I'm asking you to be Lord over my life. I believe you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are the Messiah, the Savior of the world. I do accept your gift of salvation and the gift of eternal life, and I thank you wholeheartedly. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me in all your ways for the rest of my life. And I believe through you and you alone, Jesus, that I am saved, I am healed, I'm born again, delivered, and set free from sin and the consequences of sin. And I believe that I'm healthy of mind, body, and soul in Jesus, Yeshua Hamashiach's precious, mighty, powerful name. Amen and amen. If you said that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I'm going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Bible and not doctrines from the world. Uh, we cannot be mixing all of that. It is not biblical. It is not something that God wants us to be mixing and matching here, things of the world. And it confuses and causes chaos. And, and actually a lot of the false doctrine and, and, and the twisting of the word comes from the evil one himself. So um, don't fall for those things. Stick to the Bible. How do you know that you're being preached correctly from the Bible. I would encourage you to get a copy of the Bible and start reading it. Join a Bible study. Um, uh, you can continue to follow ours. Also join a live one with the church or con Messianic congregation that you're joining locally. Um, that you can never get enough of the Bible. That's that's all I'm going to say. And when you, you read the Bible um, solo by yourself, um, pray, ask the Holy Spirit to, to, to lead you. Invite the Holy Spirit to be your God. Uh, he is, he is a great guide. He, he will, you know, he's, he's wonderful. He will teach you and show you things that you, you might overlook just reading it. But even just getting familiar with the Bible is so important. And if you just sit in a pew and you listen to somebody preach at you, how do you know what you're getting told is actually true biblical and not something that is pulled out from the world or from television even or from a movie? Uh, no, we, you need to be sure. Um, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is discerning of spirit. Um, so we need to be discerning uh, to know that we're getting told the truth. 
develop a prayer life. Um, also, you are now a member of the family of God. You're a child of God. The creator of all things is your heavenly father. How cool is that? That Yeshua provided that path of redemption and also the ability for us to become members and joint heirs of the kingdom of heaven. And a child of God, the most high God. Amen. Amen. So develop a relationship with him. Talk to him. He does not care about your denomination. That is not what is important here. What is important when you join a church is that you're learning um, from the true biblical sense. Um, that is the most important. So de denominations are just another sense of division. We have so much division in our world today. We just really don't need more division. And, and if anything, the body and Messiah needs to unify and be united instead of divided. Um, and, and that's always been my prayer for the body, the body of Messiah that, that, all the little nitpicky stuff stops and we, we come together as one united front against evil and actually doing what we are called to do um, by the Lord. And, and each of us has other, each of us has different things to do because, you know, the body is make up, made up of so many parts when you think about the physical body. And so it's the same in the spiritual sense. So, but the, but but just like the body, if something goes wrong in the body, it affects other parts of the body. So it is the same with the spiritual body. So we need to keep the whole body of Messiah healthy and whole. Build one another up, not tear down. And to be about the Father's business. I see, and I, I've mentioned this before, and 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 it it, it just is ongoing and ongoing. I see all these little nitpicky things um, within the body of Messiah. You know, if there's people that read your posts uh, on social media and they were thinking about getting born again and saved, you may be turning them off big time. <laughs> I mean, if you're fighting with members, other members of the of the body of Messiah. That's not something that is inviting to an outsider looking in. It doesn't even look like anything they want. Uh, you know, if, if I was an outsider looking in, I'd say, uh, you know what, I don't want any part of that. It's just no different than the rest of the world. They don't have anything to offer that's, that's different. That's not true. So we need to display what we truly are in Christ Jesus and what he has done for us. And that is 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 being... Good ambassadors, you know, we want to take as many people with us to heaven as we can. Amen. Amen. Well, that's all that I'm going to say on that, but I, I know I've said it before, but it keeps going on and um, I'm hoping that it reaches those that are doing this. Um, you know, the Holy Spirit puts stuff on my heart to say at times, and I know it's a reason, and hopefully it does, it is getting to, to some of the people that are doing these things and that they cease doing these things and come together as a whole. You know, you need to start spending more time in, in, in introducing people to Yeshua, to Jesus. And what he's done, bring them to Jesus so he can save them. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to close this week's Bible study with the ironic blessing, the priestly blessing. Uh, and that is found in Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 to 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, um, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons. He wanted to put his name on the children of Israel and give them a blessing. And he gave them specific words to speak over, to speak this blessing over the people. Now, I just want to make mention when you are born again and saved, you were grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. This blessing is also for you. This is for the entire family of God. Um, and when you get born again and saved, God puts his name on you as well. And he seals you with his Holy Spirit. How cool is that? He loves you that much. And this is a blessing for all the people of God. And in Hebrew, it goes like this. Ivarekaka Adonai ve'ishmareka, ya'er Adonai panavaleka vikuneka, 
Isa Adonai Panavaleka Veasamaka Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. And it is still early enough to say Shavua Tov. Have a good week. And if you are more than welcome to join us on Tuesday evenings, we would love very much to have you um, join us. We meet live in real time on our free conference call.com channel and look for that announcement that's posted on our four social media platforms of, of Gab, of USA.life, and of MeWe and Facebook. God bless each and every one of you.